intro. The definition of re recalibration is as follows. To calibrate something again, these systems gradually drift off course so that the mag navigation arrow periodically needs a fresh point of reference to recalibrate the navigation system. Humanity needs a fresh point of reference. We are heading in the wrong direction. We are like a grand ship without a rudder. Our compass is pointing <coughs> towards the north and we are heading south right into a hurricane. Our internal guidance system malfunctioned a long time ago. We don't even know that it even existed. Many politicians have lost their moral compass. Truth is fiction and fiction is truth. Many of them spin the truth so much they can't even discriminate between truth and fiction in their own minds. Mind you, this is dangerous territory. Consequently, many Americans believe this. Just look at the Capitol building riot in early January. Many politicians have spun the truth to say it was a peaceful demonstration. Try telling that to Vice President Pence and his family. He had to run for dear life. We live in crazy and chaotic times. How does humanity change for the better? Can we change? That's probably a better question. Yes, we can. It will take time and patience. I don't see it in my generation or the generation after that. But seeds have been planted thousands of years ago. The harvesting of man takes patience and much care. Millions of people are slowly waking up from their slumber. Signposts are all around us. The recalibration first starts inside of you. From you, it expresses itself externally. It doesn't work the other way around. That's the problem. You have to be motivated to recalibrate yourself. Nobody can do it for you. That, my friend, is a biggie. Unfortunately, humanity is stuck in its ways and refuses to budge. Somehow, we prefer misery at our doorstep instead of walking in another new and wonderful direction. We are so used to living in chaos that we become chaotic in our daily lives. It is sad, but true. Every cornerstone of society has to change. Nothing can be swept under the carpet. We've already dumped a huge amount of garbage in our living rooms. Just think, we have a patch of plastic the size of Texas in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. A wise man once said many moons ago, we are sawing off the branch we are sitting on. I have a website called Evolution Revolution. This is where society must be headed. The evolution of man needs a peaceful revolution without any guns. The revolution begins inside of you. Anger and flaming others aren't the answer. Only kindness, love, and compassion are the keys to success. They must be mined within. Only by discovering these precious jewels within can you recalibrate. Your human body is wired for this. The operating system, hardware, and software have been there since your birth. You just have to turn it on. You must turn on the switch. All the great masters did this. They had the same problems you had. Nobody gets a free ride. But they all overcame their problems. They discovered the jewel within. They told humanity there is a way out of this chaos. For most people, this went over their heads. They couldn't understand the message. The message 
is always simple. True kindness exists inside of you. You have an infinite well of kindness inside of you. You are the universe and you just don't know it. This book will talk about the various ways we need to recalibrate in all areas of life. I hope you get something out of it. The Law of Calibration To understand this law, one must first understand that everything from the sun to the moon and the stars, everything changes, shifts, and transforms. Nothing is static in the universe. <coughs> everything changes. Your body is alive. Your cells are constantly going through the process of being born living and dying nothing stays the same your mind is constantly moving the emotional state is constantly changing upon your different modes of emotions we are driven by our thoughts habits and emotions to recalibrate means to constantly begin to shift and transform our awareness towards the highest attention day by day we begin to use all the laws and rays and begin to use them in our daily life. We begin to drop our old destructive energies and begin to use our mind, body and soul to enhance each and every moment. Much like the metamorphosis of the butterfly, we begin to change in every level and become a human being. We merge the mind and heart and truly become a human being who drops the old destructive energies that mankind has allowed for thousands of years. Day by day, the law of calibration, recalibration allows us to transmute our old destructive energies and transform them into something we can't even imagine at this point in time. Built into our DNA lies the potential of mankind. This life is meant to be lived where we fine-tune ourselves moment to moment in all our actions. We live in a state of being in a we live in a state of being in a reactive mode. It's very easy to react. It's very difficult for one to stop, ponder, and not respond in a reactive way. If someone says something you don't like, it's very easy to get super angry and burst out with words that are destructive in nature. The wise man plays life like a master chess player. Before he, she even speaks, he looks and ponders his move towards transmitting, transmitting the situation into the, into the highest good of all. He, she take, looks five steps ahead, just like a master chessman and sees the necessary steps of action to take place. He or she is a master of life. This skill is a day-to-day -day learning effort. We must learn to recalibrate our daily actions from the old energies to the new. This is a spiritual person making conscious efforts in each and every moment. It takes time. It's not easy, but the journey is one small step after another. We don't leap and get there. We will stumble and fall, and yet we will learn so much along the way. We can we can convert our old destructive ways of doing things and change for the better. This is built into our DNA. So much of our society is socially driven artificially. We adore our movie stars and pop stars, yet we forget how precious life is. We live so much driven by a culture that has forgotten the true values of being a human being. Can you imagine a planet of human beings who live in a state of, of bringing these laws and rays into fruition into each and every moment? I would say that would be heaven on earth, built into our DNA, are the codes for us to tap into. In order to achieve this day by day, we must be consciously aware of our actions. 
this life is an incredible game. We haven't seen, we haven't seen anything yet. The game of transforming in life, this planet, and yourself begins with you. It always was and always be. Peace on earth will happen. It depends upon each and every human being to take conscious responsibility. It's a fun journey when one begins to consciously calibrate on a daily basis. These laws and rays are in your DNA. This is truly who you are. This is not a religion to live by. This is our true state of existence. We are truly infinite. We all shift in different ways. Each one of us will drop our own destructive energies in different ways. People who smoke will begin to see practical ways to stop smoking. They may see that in order to change something, you must replace one habit with another. They may learn how to meditate or take a walk when the urge comes up. Each one of us can learn to look at our own destructive ways and begun, begin to shift. Awareness is the key. Our society is advertising driven. Coke and Pepsi is cool to drink. McDonald commercials are everywhere. everywhere. Did, we, did we ever see a commercial on a simple thing as a fruit and vegetable? We have lost our way. GMOs are everywhere in our food. In our food. When one begins to recalibrate, one understands that the true temple is our human body. It feels good to nurture our body. Our body constantly speaks to us, yet most of the time we ignore it or we aren't in touch with it. The key is awareness. We must be more aware than what is presented on our TV. Our movies constantly reinforce ways of being that are in the past and don't serve us any longer. What I'm trying to say is that by bringing in the, the reins back to yourself, you'll be in total control, not some random commercial on TV. You will begin to take responsibility for your life and actions. You will take actions to be happy. You will take actions to exercise and, and eat good food. You begin to meditate and experience the joy inside of you. You begin to start not being reactive when people are angry around you. You begin to be aware of your body and listen to it. You begin to learn patience on a moment to moment level in each and every moment. You will learn how to be consciously recalibrating, adapt and change for the better. We will stumble and fall. That's part of the game and learning process. This is truly the game of life. This is probably the most important game you will ever play because it's your life. Only you can change yourself. People can help you, but the changes begin with you. You are the main character in this game. Man will recalibrate weapons to destruction, yet man never recalibrates himself such as the, the economy of man. How long will it take for man to realize that the keys to life lie within? Weapons of destruction only bring destruction, yet the key to life brings peace to the planet. The answer lies within. Only you can open the door within. When I worked for the observatory in Maui, we had to recal recalibrate many instruments in order for them to work properly. Does man get recalibrated and isn't aware of it? Is this a new recalibration of man? Is the entire universe watching in suspense? Will there be peace on earth? Is the earth recalibrating for man? discovering his true nature. The journey of life is going on. The rules have changed. The old energy of war is going away. People are fed up. Watch the recalibration of man. We will bring peace to this planet. Our education system needs recalibrating. 
Here are some of my thoughts that are out of the box concerning education. Teach children at a very young age to meditate. Remember, the more you pay attention to something, the more attention that pays to you. The younger a child is, the less garbage exists inside of them. Teach them to daily weed their own gardens. Teach them to plant the seeds within and water them daily. Give them practical examples of what happens when a society doesn't do this. Note, this is where history and current events come in. Learn how to overcome our chaotic lives which lead to malfunctions in all areas of society. The mind is your friend, not your foe. As one trains your favorite dog, the mind must be trained. An untrained mind and one who has lost true discrimination are extremely harmful to the world at large. When truth becomes fiction, and when fiction becomes truth, are warnings that your system is on the verge of collapsing. See this in our politics today. We should teach our youth that the hardware, software, and operating systems are installed inside of you even before you were born. We must teach them to activate the computer, otherwise it will bring society to the state we are in today. Children must learn that they are master chemists. They are responsible for creating their emotional state of being. As a child, society taught me to stuff my emotions. Society never taught us how to deal with them and to transform our subconscious mind. Over 95% of our actions come from our subconscious mind. Only around 5% is conscious. Children must learn how to reprogram their subconscious every day. There are incredible tools out there. We must teach children the relationship between the mind and body. Your state of mind dictates the state of your body, and a healthy mind will have an unhealthy body. Children should learn about proper nutrition. They should have practical experience eating junk food and experience within the effects of them. The same goes for nutritional foods. They should have first-hand experiences of how they affect the mind and body. The problem today is around 99% of our society has lost inner intuition. Only through silence can one break through. The body and mind will tell you what it needs. This leads to preventative medicine. We put full trust in our pharmaceutical drugs to heal us. We don't want to take any responsibility on our own. The pharmaceutical drug industry knows this and takes advantage of this. They really don't want to cure you. That would hurt their bottom line of making profits. They even have the gall to say this. About a year ago, I saw an interview with a large drug company. The CEO said, we are not in the business of curing people. We're in the business of making money for our shareholders. <laughs> that about sums it up. Every drug on the market has a serious side effect. Listen to the sweet commercials and they will tell you for each drug what they are. Yes, even death is included on the list. Humanity is playing Russian roulette when they're taking these drugs. Remember, they're only masking the symptoms, not curing the problem. Each member of society should take responsibility for their mind and body. Tools must be provided in all stages of life for everybody. We are constantly learning and growing. What was said 10 years ago might be obsolete today. Society must allow those who think 
and invent outside of the box to be an integral part of society. The medical system must include them in everyday living. Currently, they would do anything possible to stop them. They threaten them to the core. Not all great discoveries threaten present-day societies. Ask dear old Galileo. He dared to say our Earth revolves around the sun. The Catholic Church loved that so much, he was put on house arrest for the rest of his life. Energetic medicine is the way of the future. All diseases first start on the energetic level and then slowly manifest in the material, the human body. In the future, one be able to walk into a booth and a device will scan the body and find areas that need to get fixed. The proper energy frequency will be dispensed. The person will be healed. Mind you, once healed, one must take practical measures to make sure it doesn't happen again. Remember, only through your will and actions can you heal yourself. If one abuses this and one goes back to the present day thinking that I don't have to do anything, at some point this treatment won't work. Your will is the driving force in all this. That's why God gave you free will. You can use it in any way you like. Mind you, a will that is not in alignment with the universe will soon backfire. You can't break natural laws and think you can get away with them. Take a look today in society, especially during this pandemic, and you will see what I mean. Practical tools meditating, yoga, take care of mind and body, exercise, be outdoors, get sunlight, drink water, eat good food, learn to reprogram your subconscious, think outside of the box, be kind, probably the most important. Learn that the thread it is tying us all together. You are never alone. You are the universe. You just don't know. You are not separate from your fellow man. Learn to enjoy the diversity of life. That means every human being on this planet. Learn to let go of all your emotional baggage. It places a heavy burden on you and others. Change the system by only voting for those who have a foundation in kindness. Don't vote bullies in office. This has been done for thousands of years. Look at the state of the world today. Do you like the current condition? A society or a nation can only change for the better when both sides realize they must cooperate and compromise with each other. Holding onto power only leads to greater problems. Your enemy is saying the same thing, yet has different ways of saying it. Read the Tao Te Ching to understand what I mean. Learn to be in harmony with all, especially Mother Earth. We were sent to our rooms for a reason during this pandemic. Unfortunately, most of us didn't learn anything. A timeout was called, yet we got bored in our living rooms. Most of humanity didn't ponder and think about what's going on and the message we must embrace. Happiness only exists inside of you. The Joel exists inside of you. As a society to survive, we must make this inner connection. We are oblivious to it. Scientists are speaking up, but everyone on Earth has to change. Time is running out. We must change in every area of life. 
Recalibration is needed in all aspects of life. There isn't a single area that doesn't need to be recalibrated. Common sense is uncommon. We see only around 1% of the light spectrum, yet we think we can see all of it. Therefore, there is a far greater reality than what we currently know. Each one of us must discover our true nature. If we don't, we will continue to go down this path in life. Only through discovering the missing piece of the puzzle can the world survive. Changing the state of the world begins with you. If you don't change, the world won't change. It's as simple as that. You can't take anything with you when you die. Yet your treasures of kindness, patience, and tolerance comes with you. All the infinite treasures inside of you go with you. You never taught this. Learn to live in the center of the hurricane. Presently, the winds of the mind blow you like leaves blowing in the wind. This is the current condition today. Take care of your chemistry set. You are your own master chemist. You were never taught this. Take care of your inner garden. Turn on the computer inside. Learn to practically program your inner life. Life is a blessing and a miracle. Wake up and smile and laugh. Learn to sleep like a newborn child. Live your life so when you put your head on the pillow, you will not have a care in the world. Learn to love problems. They are the spice in life. Curveballs will come your way. You can learn to hit the ball out of the park or bunt and get on base. Only you can play the game. The coaches can't play them for you. Nobody gets a free ride. Teach your young these practical principles. They can change our society. Practice makes perfect. We all stumble and fall. That is called life. Love your fellow man. We are all on the same boat sailing home. Recalibration in media. When truth becomes fiction and fiction becomes truth, you know it's time to recal recalibrate your media world. When a channel spins the truth and millions of people get their information from that channel, it's time to recalibrate. When a station advises the president daily, it's time <coughs> to recalibrate. Unfortunately, they don't see it that way. They firmly believe they are speaking the truth. They are presenting the facts. How dare you insinuate we aren't. When you wear rose-colored glasses, that is what you will see. Not until you convince them to take off the glasses will they take them off in the present time. <laughs> Good luck. When a thought turns into action, when an action turns into a habit, when a habit turns into your personality, you have wired your subconscious mind. Therefore, you will act instantaneously without any conscious awareness. This is where we are today. To change this mindset takes skill and effort. First of all, one must be in a state where one wants to change. If they aren't in this state, they will never be able to change. Your will must be in alignment with your choice to change. This is not easy. When one identifies totally with a group consciousness, it's very hard to break out of it. In the media world, even if you do it personally, you will get fired if you act upon it. The cycle continues and the situation only gets worse. 
we get tangled in our own web. The media has to change, just as very complicated and difficult to do. The system needs recalibration, yet every individual involved needs to press the reset button. Not impossible, but huge hurdles are there. The media is not at a point where they can do this. The basic laws of recalibration can occur when your will is out of alignment. Over 50 years ago, good old Walter Cronkite would read the news. He didn't try to spin it one way or another. He just presented the facts. You had to interpret it, what he was saying. The news being delivered wasn't slanted one way or another. This was a journalist. One was trained this way in school. A journalist just presented the facts. We have come a long way from this. Our media has turned into spin doctors. We spin the truth to go to our way of thinking. We will turn the truth into fiction, and the fiction into truth on a whim. The Capitol building riot is a perfect example. Both sides condemned it and spoke against it. Yet months later, one side said it was only a peaceful demonstration. They are fighting to have an outside investigation from ever for for ever this could ever occur again. The media takes this and spins their points of view. This is dangerous territory. We have witnessed this many times throughout history with no positive results. In fact, millions of people have died due to twisted thinking and blaming a particular group to be a scapegoat. The eagle has both a left wing and a right wing. It can't fly if one wing is broken. How far down the rabbit hole do we have to go in order to change our ways? Recalibration in entertainment. How much is the gaming industry worth? Think billions. The global game market is set to reach $256 billion by 2025. More than 2.5 billion people worldwide play games. In 2020, the console gaming market will experience its lowest growth rate since 215. Players will spend 4.5 billion on immersive games by the end of 2020. Sony Interactive Entertainment estimated value is $13.4 billion. Esports enjoys an audience of around 456 million people. High fidelity mobile games are on the rise. <coughs> These are incredible figures. More than 2.5 billion people worldwide play games. Yet, is this great for the overall health of the mind and body? Yes, it is entertainment. The definition of entertainment is as follows. Entertainment, noun, the action of providing or being provided with amusement or enjoyment. Everyone sits in front of the TV for entertainment. Society places games for, for amusement and enjoyment. But are all games good for you? Let's take a practical look at this. I just took a look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Did you know that the mind doesn't know the difference between a game and real advice events in your life? The more realistic a game is, the more impactful it is to the mind and body. Playing video games is directly rewiring the subconscious mind. One is using the entire five senses. The firing of the various weapons is directly connected to the mind and body. Look, I'm not going to get in, involved in the moral issue. 
that's you to decide. But I will mention that in every moment one is reprogramming the mind and body. The present day disease occurs when the body and mind are not in harmony. Our chaotic world around us compounds the problem when the entire world needs to recalibrate and press the reset button. It's hard enough as is to learn how to be in harmony with chaos all around. Now just think, billions of people get hooked and addicted to these games. They want you to be addicted, and that's their point, so you will buy the next version. Remember, this is a profit-driven company. That is the bottom line. Making money is the name of the game, period. They hire the best people in the world to do incredible jobs. Many of them have no idea of the mind-body connection. Many do and could care less. Making money is the bottom line. Yes, all in the name of entertainment on your precious day off from work. You need to be entertained and gain is a great way to do so. Look, I don't disagree. We all need a break from reality. We need to have entertainment in our lives. Yet the question is, what kind of entertainment? Just think, any game on earth is reprogramming the mind and body. In each and every moment, you are reprogramming the subconscious. 95% of your actions are dictated by your subconscious mind. Only 5% is conscious. Playing violent video games is rewiring directly the mind and body. There is no getting around this. The video game goes directly into your subconscious being. You are literally rewiring the neural circuits of the brain. You can't get a better way to reprogram than that. It's like hooking up a computer and downloading violence into the nervous system. Mind you, when the mind is violent, the body will be violent. You can't separate the two. When both the mind and body are violent, disease will occur. Scientists are discovering that there is a one-to-one -one connection for disease between the mind and body. I have my own ethical concern when society plays violent games, but let's stick only to the scientific research of playing these games. In each moment, one is reprogramming the mind and body. That is a fact. We are unaware of this. We never learned this in schools. We don't know that we are master chemists in life. Scientists beginning to know this. Thousands of experiments have been done in the last 30 years. The Far East has been on this bandwagon for thousands of years. If one understands this basic principle, one begins to recalibrate and push the reset button in one's life. One begins to refine their thoughts, emotions, and actions. When one begins to see that this life is the ultimate video game, we are going from darkness to light. There are infinite levels. Each level has something to learn from. That's why the ultimate experience is gathering knowledge and wisdom along the way. Note, there is a huge difference between knowledge and information. We are inundated with too much information. There is system overload and society can't handle it. That's why billions of people escape to entertainment. We need a break from reality. Yet we are compounding the problem when we use our free time to directly reprogram our neural circuits. We are literally brainwashing the mind and body. Here's a great blog I discovered. It's by Garrett Hayos. New Revolution Video Game for Emotional and Spiritual Intelligence. Video games are becoming emotionally and spiritual intelligent. If you're not seeing it yet, we are at tip of the iceberg. It's only 
cresting above the waves, but it's coming. Designing video games for a mindful world. Sound self is more like meditation or psychedelics than it is a video game. We have a legal psychedelic resurgence happening right now through research therapy by MAT, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. I think it's just a few years we're going to see a massive legalization of psychedelics, but can't help but have a massive impact on the psychology and the empathy and send the level of care we show for one another and well-being across the country. We actually have unitive states of consciousness being achieved through playing this game without any any psychedelic or chemical intervention. You just turn off the lights, use your voice, and just fall into it. It's magical. It brings up lots of emotions because it's a totally abstract experience. I think it's very beautiful. We see people coming out of it, sometimes crying, often laughing. Maybe you have a memory of your mother and you have some part of your identity that hinges upon it like a great leverage point that you can then use to evolve yourself. In sound self, you start at the base of the tree and you're taught how to engage with the experience using your voice <coughs> and you use long tones and the experience slowly responds to you. It begins bringing geometric shapes the music fills and resonates with your voice and harmonizes with you. It dis disengages the judging part of your mind that would normally help you through the world and make distinction between things. A lot of emotions come up. So for people who have no interest in psychedelics, that's totally fine. What's great about this version a psychedelic substance is, with, is that this is you could just take it off if you're uncomfortable. This is a deeply healing experience, a sensual bath of reality. It can take you to really deep places of stillness without having any meditation experience because it's a game. The interactive system pulls you in. I think the biggest takeaway for me has been realizing early on that there's a lot of assumptions we make as game designers about who we design the games for. So many therapeutic practices like yoga can be life-changing for people. They bring you out of your head and identity. You root yourself into reality through your body and sensations. Most of the time when you play a game, you relate to yourself as a person. You have an avatar on the screen you're controlling and you're relating to other avatars as well. So the game design reinforces a sense of identity. I had the re realization that meditation is a game you're playing that's not targeting the top level of your being, that identity. When you're meditating, you're engaging deeper levels of reality beyond the identity, and we can do the same with game design. We can have games, which is a system of interaction which engages a person on a deeper level of their identity through the voice and the breath. We treat the players as a body, as a soul, as vibration. We really only are just scratching the surface of what's possible when you design the game. As biosensors are integrated into these video games, and we get more biometric data from players, we will see more sophisticated game designs that are targeting deeper systems into players' being beyond their identity. Typically, we engage with games through a controller or keyboard. As with virtual reality, it's a little more bonded to an actual body. 
As soon as the input mechanism shifts, it naturally invites designers to think in a more subtle and sophisticated way about what the player is like. VR is great if you're interested in leveraging human psychology. Gaming is a really great place where you can have people because of the scale of the institutions having surpassed the size of the film industry. You can have people practicing something in a massively scalable way. The interactivity of games really leads itself to a quality of being in a relationship with a piece of art or entertainment in a way that is deeper than a narrative. The only technology that I think is on par with gaming in terms of how powerful it is for the human psychology is music. Gaming is a huge institution that has enormous capacity for impacting a player's physiology, but the tool as it being used now is unsophisticated. If you look at the whole scape of what's possible to do with just a minute of live human existence, the best video games in the world can't touch on a romantic intercourse, a psychedelic revelation, or deep meditation. And it's not because of a limitation of the technology, because like we've seen, these interactive, immersive X-Touch are psychology deeply. It's just a set of assumptions built in the design, into the disciplines of design. From the business infrastructure to the psychological leverage of immense, immersive systems is an incredible, powerful tool that is being completely underused right now. We can massively increase the potency of experiences that are available to people everywhere. Video games are becoming emotionally and spiritual intelligent. If you're not seeing it yet, it's because it's the tip of the iceberg. It's only just kind of cresting above the waves, but it's coming. It's not a game. It's a digital transcendental way to overcome the ego. In closing, we are at the cups of hopefully changing our ways. This is the wave of the future. recalibration and entertainment too. Last night, I was talking to my daughter, Aaliyah. We were talking about the chapter I wrote on entertainment. Aaliyah said, thank God there are games to play during this pandemic. This literally saved us during these times. To be honest, I never thought of along those lines. Gaming provide people from being completely bored during this crisis. There are always two sides to the coin. We are all at different stages in the video game of life. What is food for me may be poison for you. What is food for you may be poison for me. We are going from darkness to light. Hopefully we can fine tune the guitar of life. I'm brainstorming different ways that we can change for the better. As I said before, I'm not going to get into the moral and ethic issues of war games. I'm pre presenting the latest scientific facts on the mind and body connection. Scientists all around the world know this. Every moment we are directly rewiring the mind and body. As I said, we are master chemists. During this pandemic, gaming provides a way to survive without getting completely bored. My lifestyle is extremely refined. There are no words to describe it. 
I spent 50 years recalibrating in all areas of my life. I don't want to condescend to what people are doing. I've been there and done that. Hopefully you can learn the tricks of the trade. The world would be in a better place if we all did this. These tools are extremely simple and practical at the same time. They are not complicated at all. Just look at a newborn baby. You can't get simpler than that. That, my friend, is our natural state. I'm trying to help pinpoint areas that we can change for the better. This would not only help you, but the world at large. Recalibration in society. Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. The Upanishads. This sums up the character of man. <clears throat> this is who we become. Yes, it's so simple. We ignore it for our entire life. Yes, there are millions of people trying to change this world. They understand this concept. We are waking up from our slumber. There has never been a better time to wake up than this present moment. I find it fascinating that our thoughts become our world's words. Our words can help heal this planet or bring more chaos to it. Currently in the political climate, the thoughts is so twisted. The words become twisted. Truth is fiction and fiction becomes the truth. From these words, they become actions. Our actions are aligned with nature of the universe. Consequently, we bring more darkness to this land. Look at all the chaotic endeavors on this planet today. Need I say more? The actions that we take become habits. Did you know that it takes only three weeks to establish a habit? This habit can be a good one, or one that is destructive. When society at large spins the truth constantly, it becomes a habit. Over time, this becomes our character. You can see this in politics today. Facebook is another prime example. People are constantly flaming each other today. People are putting gasoline on the fire of life. Smoke fills the air, and we can't see clearly. Our eyes burn from the smoke. We have a hard time breathing. Kindness puts out these flames. Kindness is our true nature. Kindness will help solve any problem. Society today has been indoctrinated to think that kindness is weak and being a bully is true strength. Yet nothing can be further than the truth. The entire universe fabric is kindness. Yet so many people twist this fact. We have allowed bullies into our social world and they have infiltrated directly into society at large. As a society, we have taken their words at heart. The opposite side is always the enemy make them the target of our disgust. We have seen this in this world for thousands of years. World War II was a prime example. Yet our discrimination is only along party lines. What the party says we align with, even if it's a spiral effect doomed for disaster. True character is easy to obtain. Yet one must be conscious and willing to change in each and every moment. When one understands this phrase, one embarks on the journey as transforming oneself 
for the better. Peace on earth can never come if we don't change individually. A savior cannot save this world. He or she is probably the greatest coach on earth, yet a coach can never play the game for you. He remains on the sidelines in life. You have to play the game yourself. Great guidance will come your way. You just have to take the guidance and implement it into your daily life. The more one realizes this simple concept and practice it daily, the world will slowly change for the better. The problem is that 95% of our actions are subconscious, while 5% are conscious. We must learn how to reprogram ourselves to solve this puzzle. One must press the reset button and recalibrate oneself. Recalibration in sports. I remember as a kid playing sports after school. My elementary school had this huge playground where we could play football and baseball. Mind you, they were all pickup games. There was no coaches involved. We had so much fun. Everybody got along with each other, regardless of ability or age. I don't ever remember any fights breaking out. I don't remember any cheating that occurred. We just loved to play together. The object was friendship and having fun. It wasn't to win at any cost. It wasn't to kill your competitor. Mind you, these teammates became incredible athletes in later years. I believe those initial years become the fabric of our life. We didn't have a coach hovering over us, yelling at us when we made stupid mistakes. We were fortunate that most of our coaches loved to coach. They put their heart and soul into it. They inspired us. When we made a mistake, they wouldn't condone us or yell at us. How can one grow as an athlete if you don't make mistakes? Mistakes are part of life. They bring us to a higher level in playing the game. Mistakes are a way to fine-tune ourselves. I once heard a great story about Ted Williams. He would not go to the movies because watching movies might damage his precious eyes. He didn't drink alcohol because he didn't want to be impaired. Mind you, this was the glory days of drinking to excess. Baseball players were known for their drinking. You could say he was a baseball mystic. He refined his life during his professional days to be fine-tuned at his craft. This is from Wikipedia. He finished his playing career with a .344 batting average. 521 home runs and a 482 on base percentage, the highest of all time. He was a sportsman on and off the field. The general public held him to his highest esteem. Sports stars are worshipped by the public. Being a sports star places one under public scrutiny. It takes a bit of emotional maturity. One can play the sport quite well, yet lack the emotional maturity of life. Those who taunt their opponents are a sign of their own emotional insecurity. When a person gets famous, it can boost their ego and they feel entitled by it. They lose discrimination and perform foolish actions. We have seen numerous times stars with a lot of monies, 
squandering it away. The average football star loses his money within five years of retiring. That's a sad fact. They should be trained by their teams about money management. Many of these athletes are young and need to learn the ropes in life. Imagine being poor one instant and the next instant one gets a contract for half a billion dollars. <laughs> no wonder there is so much turmoil today. Once again, I say the spiritual life is the most practical life. One who monitors his thoughts, words, and actions in each moment is truly the wise man. This sets the foundation in all areas of love. Yes, curveballs will be thrown at you. That's part of lying. That's how you learn and grow in compassion. Curveballs thrown your way are a part of life. A wise man understands that. He uses this as an advantage. With a proper mindset, one learns how to live in the center of the hurricane. The average person lives in the hurricane forces of the mind. The mind can be either your friend or foe. It's the constant battle from life. We all train our dogs. A disciplined dog is a delight to be around. He is well trained and has all the incredible dog-like qualities. An untrained dog barks constantly in the backyard. We all know what that is like. In the same manner, we were never taught how to control the mind. There is a science behind it. The East has known this for thousands of years. We are just at the forefront of discovering the same tools and concepts from the East. It is being refined to the Western mind. Our world at large must press the reset button and recalibrate. We can make this world a better place. Recalibration in mind and body. We live in such a shallow state of existence. We only see around 1% of the light spectrum. Because of this, we live shallow lives. We have lost the connection between the mind, body, and soul. You are the universe. You just don't know it. That is probably one of my favorite expressions. Ask Mark McClellan. The whole universe is singing to us, yet we are texting on the freeway of life. Our foundation is built on the external. The external does not hold the keys to life. Yet, we are so stubborn or lazy to do anything about it. If I can't see it, I can't believe it. Yet, we have the chemistry set within. It has been there since the day we were born. Mind you, we use this chemistry set in each and every moment. Unfortunately, we have not become master chemists. We are performing experiments that goes against our true nature. <coughs> the mind and body are not in harmony. The mind controls us. It should be the other way around. We should be in control of our mind. We all train our dogs, yet we don't train our minds. Common sense is truly uncommon. The hardest thing to conquer in the entire universe is your mind. We have sunk to such a level where chaos is all around us, but we accept that situation. <coughs> when fiction becomes truth, and truth becomes fiction, we have entered a dangerous state of mind. A calm mind and a calm body leads to harmony. When one is in harmony, one simply smiles at the curved balls thrown at you. One has nothing to say or prove. 
We have trillions of cells in the body. They are all aware. They are a part of you. Your mind is a precious part of you. Your soul is a precious part of you. As human beings, we are wired to have this unity and harmony in each and every moment. Does that excite you? Or is it just some mumbo jumbo of words? We have such unlimited potential built in. The car in the garage is gathering dust. This car was meant to draw. We can press the reset button and recalibrate our mind and body. When I was young, I thought, this is the only body you get, at least for this go around. You might as well take care of it. This has been my mission and purpose for many moons. We are always fine-tuning the guitar of life. We would never stop growing and learning. The universe does not rest on its laurels. It is constantly changing and morphing into something greater. We have such unlimited potential inside of us. We are never alone, yet we think we are. We have no idea of our magnificence. This spiritual path is practical. When we develop the will to become master chemists, this world will change for the better. You don't have to have a PhD. Look at a newborn baby. She comes into this world with a perfect chemistry set. Nothing can be grander. We must return to a child's state of existence. One can be like a child and have incredible wisdom inside. As adults, we have twisted our nature into something that is not in harmony with life. We think that is normal and the way to be. I like my way, my life the way it is. Why would I want to change? That's the problem. Our subconscious mind is running the show. It has been for thousands of years. The great masters of the past and future says you can learn how to reprogram yourself. They talk about learning to read the instruction manual within. They did it, and so can you. Recalibration in science and inventions. Did you know that many inventions occur when people think outside of the box and outside of what society thinks that's possible. Many great inventions get squashed by people in power and control. For example, my dad and grandfather built the House of the Future in 1954. It was years ahead of its time. Even 67 years later, Many of these concepts have not been incorporated into mainstream society. Look at Nicholas Tesla. He was a genius, but yet most of his life he had no great backing for his ideas. Most inventions are created by outcasts and those who have a completely different mindset than society at large. We believe in a rigid way of thinking those who think outside of the norm are ridiculed and cast away. Those who have the power don't want to share the power. Outcasts never want power in the first place. They just want to create inventions. That is their sole purpose. That is their driving force. There have been thousands of Tesla since the early 1900s. Most of them died while ever seen their creations come alive. Even during this pandemic, many scientists' ideas are being squashed today for thinking outside of the box. We should allow different preventative measures into society. Much attention has been paid to the vaccines, but hardly any attention has been placed on the practical steps 
society can take to help reduce people getting this virus. Preventative medicine still is a missing word in society today. Nobody wants to take care of themselves. We rely solely on the drug companies, so we don't have to be responsible for our own health. Look, I'm not saying don't take these vaccines. I'm saying we must allow those who think outside the box to be heard. They must be incorporated into mainstream society. We must have the mindset to listen to what they have to say. Currently, science listens to those only in power and control. This has to stop if we want to progress. We could be light years ahead of where we are now. What did Nicholas Tesla mean by his quote? If you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. Energetic medicine is the way of the future. It's been here for a while, but hasn't hit mainstream awareness. The idea of you are your own master chemist has been around for thousands of years. Yet only in the last 30 years have Western scientists begun to map this out. Even today, most of the world hasn't heard anything about this. For the world to change, society must be aware of what is possible and the new discoveries that are occurring. If these discoveries are squashed, we as a world will not progress. We must allow people to tackle the problems that we have. By doing so, we can grow in leaps and bounds. A new mindset must occur. We need a recalibration in thinking. We must allow those who think outside the box into mainstream society. We should cheer on those who have a different way of thinking. Currently, the mass media and the current scientific community only endorses those who have similar ideas. What I'm saying, everybody should have an equal voice. We are all in the same boat in life. Most inventions take place through trial and error. Many inventions occur by mistakes. They thought by doing this, this occurred. Somehow this didn't occur, but a whole other event took place. Presto, a new invention occurred. Going back to Tesla, the day our world gives up all our nuclear bombs will be grow in ways that we can't even imagine. The universe will not give out secrets for those who could destroy the world and the worlds beyond. When the world at large truly understands and practices in each moment that we are our own master chemists, when this happens, our world will change in ways that currently we can't even conceive. Science starts from within. The more internal wisdom occurs, the greater wisdom manifests into this world. The more one discovers the jewel within, the more one becomes in harmony with its true nature. We are on the verge of an evolution, revolution of love. Mark my words. Exciting times are ahead of us. Presto, the reset button has been pressed. Hold on to your seats. This is going to be an incredible ride. We are going from darkness to light. My brother and I were born December 24, 1952, in Pasadena, California. We had an incredible childhood. My dad and grandfather owned an aerospace company. The first house I remembered was near an orange grove. My brother and I would sneak through the fence and walk in the orange grove. There was a tree house and we'd climb up on it. We were probably three years old. Our house was years ahead of its time. My father and grandfather were both inventors. They developed a house where you could walk in the house Clap your hands and the lights would come on. The outlets weren't on the walls, but hidden in the carpets. We had sensors that when it rained, the windows would close. 
My mom would watch us in the backyard by a video camera while she was cooking dinner. This house was featured in the Los Angeles Times home selection. This is back in the early 50s. In the early 2000s, I saw a Burger King commercial where my mom was making hamburgers. The frying pan was floating in the air. The stove used induction coils. At that same time period, they developed a Jeep that could shoot at its tires and nothing would happen. This Jeep could float downstream. It was lighter and got more miles per gallon than the standard Jeep. They tried to get the United States government to buy the Jeeps, but after several years of losing bids, they saw the handwriting on the wall. If you don't have inside connections with the government, you could have a futuristic Jeep and nobody would care. During this time, they came up with a way to make houses that would cost one-tenth of the present day house. It was all modular. They could put up a complete house in a week. The trade union was strongly opposed to this. Consequently, it was never marketed. I guess those early years really had an impact on me. I subconsciously adapted to always looking towards the future and bring that technology back to the present. One of my first was multimedia. Even before multimedia was born, I had a company with a good longtime friend, John Slavsky. We developed a visual database for the real estate market. We could put in a search for a house and all the house which matched the criteria the house would come up. When you saw a house you liked, it would take you on the tour of the house. The program won awards at trade show, but it was far too ahead of its time. We developed some trial photo database programs for the Department of Justice, but finally lost to IBM, who bidded one dollar for the job. One of my first impressions when I was young was that when my brother and I was born, that I said I, I said to him, "You go first and check it out." My brother remembers going down a long, bright tunnel in ecstasy, and then told me to come down. I remember it was a rush, and both of us laughed inside. When we were young, my brother and I had our own telepathic communication with each other. A lot of people thought we had communication problems because we didn't talk English very well. I remember our state of communication was nonverbal, but with thoughts, pictures, emotions, and experience. It was like you wanted to know about an apple, and you never seen one. Talking was one way to explain about an apple. Another way was to graphically send the experience of an apple. I remember hearing stories about tribes in the South Sea Islands who would communicate with their loved ones telepathically. Today, we use telephones. Our sense of communication is more physical. It's kind of funny that people think it is mystical when it's probably very natural. We have simply not used this communication, so we forget we ever had this ability. So now, we scope at the idea that men can communicate in ways that we don't imagine. Young Galileo pointing his telescope towards the stars. What was in his young mind? What he went against the concepts of his time. During this age, scientists in the church believe that the sun and the planets revolved around the earth. Galileo and some scientists before, such as Copernicus, believed the earth and the planets revolved around the sun. Galileo was the first scientist to use the telescope to prove his theory. Yeah. Why does man hold on so tightly to his ideas and beliefs? The Catholic Church and the Pope himself couldn't believe Galileo. They said he was a heretic. How dare you challenge this idea that the sun and the planets revolve around the earth? Who do you think you are? Imagine being tried by the Inquisition. 
they found him guilty and placed him under house arrest. Fortunately, they didn't kill him, yet he spent the rest of his life in house arrest. Today, Galileo is known as the father of the following father of observatory astronomy, father of modern physics, father of the scientific method, father of science. <laughs> All I can say is, wow! Imagine Galileo also studied and mastered the following. Astronomy, physics, engineer, philosophy, math, mathematician. He was, in my eyes, a genius. He was way ahead of his time. Isn't it amazing we don't want man to challenge our way of thinking? Man, at times, loves living in the box. It's a comfort zone. You don't want to learn anything new or be challenged. If someone has something to say that is different, we get angry. How many innocent people got killed in the Inquisition? To be honest, I probably would have died back then from what I'm saying today. Just think, Christ died on the cross. Yet the Inquisition killed millions of people who believed in Christ in a different way. What do you think Christ would say? He would shake his head and probably have tears of compassion flowing from his eyes. Look, this adventure of life is all about discovering the mysteries of life. We should be grateful when we meet someone who has a different idea or concept of life. I was fortunate to be brought up in a household that accepted all ideas in life. Till today, I still love to hear life stories from people all around the world. Imagine, today we have telescopes scattered throughout the universe. We are looking for the mysteries of life. Recalibration in thought. The following quote comes from Remez Sasson. How many thoughts does your mind think in one hour? Do you know how many thoughts your mind thinks of each hour of the day? Experts estimate that the mind thinks between 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And that's an average of 2,500 to 3,300 thoughts per hour. That's incredible. Other experts estimate a smaller number of 50,000 thoughts per day, which means about 2,100 thoughts per hour. This too is a great number of thoughts. If you're able to sell each thought, you would be rich in no time. How about that? Interesting. Mystics have said for thousands of years that conquering your mind is the most difficult thing to do in the universe. The mind is a tricky thing to conquer. It is either your friend or foe or somewhere in between. We come into this world totally innocent and pure. Look at a newborn baby. That smile is pure joy. The mind and body comes from God. Not a care in this world. A baby just is. It doesn't live in the past or future. Its thoughts is pure. The mind is calm. It's not flaming the world with negative thoughts. Unfortunately, over time, Society teach you to entertain your thoughts 
Only my political party is correct. The other side is evil. This group is the source of all my problems. Let's eliminate them. Truth becomes fiction, and fiction becomes the truth. Have you seen that lately? I'm going to spin the truth. If I spin it every day, eventually people will believe it. Does that sound familiar? Over 70% of Republicans believe the election was rigged. No evidence was ever supported, yet new laws are being made to suppress voter rights. These all stem from thoughts in the mind. Have you ever taken an inventory of your thoughts? Have you ever seen the garbage dump that has been created? We hold on to our negative thoughts as it's the word of God. From these negative thoughts, we put them into action. From our actions, they become habits. From our habits, they become our personalities. Have you ever noticed that a person who flames almost always flames? How about a person who is caught will almost always post kind things? This is the state of our mind and thoughts. A wise person will let a negative thought enter into the front door and let it go out the back door. It will never entertain that thought. A man who lacks wisdom will constantly entertain negative thoughts and lift the good, <coughs> good thoughts out the back door. Have you seen this lately in our politics? All the world's problems <coughs> stem from an untrained thinking. Would you rather have a dog that is trained than an untrained dog? A trained dog is kind, obedient, and loves his master. An untrained dog is a menace to society. It will bark at all hours of the night. If you touch him, he may bite you. Love is the key. A dog that is love will reflect its true nature back to you. An untrained dog will reflect anger in its actions. It's as simple as that. Look, we should have been taught this in schools. Our world would be better off if it did. Going back to how many thoughts we think in a day, every moment we are bombarded with thoughts. Thoughts come and thoughts go. Most of them wince into the night, or do they? And fortunately, they get stored into our subconscious. 95% of our actions come from our subconscious minds. Hmm. Another huge dilemma. Looks like we need a reset button and need to recalibrate. recalibrate. This morning, during my sleep, I came up with this theory. I say all the time, the more attention you pay to something, the more attention it pays to you. We are going from darkness to light. This, I mean literally. That's why it's called enlightenment. Billions of people entertain their negative thoughts. The subconscious runs the show. A wise person learns that we are our own master chemists. Not only that, but we can reprogram our subconscious mind. We can rewire our neural circuits and brain. We can rewire our minds and body. Western scientists have proven this over and over again. It's not in our mainstream, in our society. If thousands of studies out there, people are teaching this to the general public in seminars. My theory is meditation is the key to slow down thoughts. At the beginning of my meditation practice, it would take an hour to slow down the mind just to enter the meditation state. Over the years, the mind slows down tremendously. At times, the mind slows down so much that it takes effort just to think. In this state, one can easily have the negative thought go in the front door and out the back door. No effort is involved. 
Yes, this takes practice. Remember, nobody gets a free ride. Remember, the more attention you pay to something, the more attention it pays to you. The problem with this world is we are unconscious. We see only 1% of the light spectrum, yet we think we are wide awake. I love the expression, you could take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. A wise master once said, but you can put salt into his food. Hopefully, this is salt to you. I could ramble on and on. Maybe, just maybe, you might reflect and ponder this over. We are living in a matrix. We are playing the video game of life. There are an infinite amount of levels to play on. We are just on level one. Recalibration in environment. This is from Gaia. Stop throwing your garbage in my living room. How dare you do this? I'm always here to support you. I'm your mother. You tend to mock the indigenous people all around the world. You say they are primitive. Yet, they are the custodians of the land. They are not consumers of the land, but protectors. They see the forest as precious jewels to be protected. You see them as commodities to be taken and sold to the highest bidder. Huge difference. Remember, I do not need you, but you need me. Without your mother, you would not be here. Time is ticking away. I've given you advance warnings many times before. The problems you face will only get worse if you ignore them. You must embrace the concept of conscious economics. There have been even books written about this. I'm always with you. I hold you in my arms. You are too busy texting on the freeway of life. You are never alone. As the author said, you are the missing piece of the puzzle. Only you can change and embrace me. Your house is filled with empty trinkets taken from my precious resources. After some time, it ends up in the dump. You need a simpler life. Your lifestyle cannot be sustained. You work yourself to death so you may enjoy the weekends. Yet when Sunday comes along, you dread that tomorrow you have to go back to work. What a wasted way to live. The indigenous people try to live with me constantly. They are simple people, yet they can communicate with me. Can you communicate with me? If so, why aren't you? There is a better way to live. You are so locked into your little boxes. Warning signs are all around you. Humanity can sense great danger, yet the world at large is paralyzed. It will take the whole world to change for the better to solve this problem. Your lifestyle must change dramatically. Are you up for this? Humanity is going from darkness to light. This has been foretold for thousands of years. The end of the story is unknown. And that's why it's called a story. You decide the end of the story. Your actions decide the end of the story. Your will decides the end of the story. Your ignoring the problem decides the end of the story. Your unwillingness to change decides the end of the story. You can change for the better. I'm always with you both externally and inside of you. I'm always whispering in your ears. I love you. Recalibration in nutrition. You are what you eat. There is no getting around this. 
When I was in grade school, a good friend of mine would have a glass of Coke and a Winchell's donut <coughs> for breakfast. He did this for years. I have friends that only drink soda instead of water. Our human bodies are the most magnificent thing in all of creation. It is truly a divine temple. It is more precious than any external temple, church, or synagogue. Inside of us lies the creator of all. It is quite sad we never learn about nutrition in our lives. It is hardly mentioned in our schools. In medical schools, it's glossed over. You might at the most have 8 to 40 hours of training, depending on the medical school. That's it. And I said many times before, you are your own master chemist. You provide the chemicals for your lab. Your thoughts, emotions, actions, and the food and water that you drink are essential components for your internal lab. Madison Avenue has brainwashed us to get hooked and addicted to junk food. We take better care of our cars than our human bodies. We take our cars for an oil change and tuna. We provide maintenance on a car depending upon what needs to be serviced. This is embedded into our conscious, yet taking care of our precious human body is not. How ironic! Our healthcare system is antiquated. It's a disease-based system. Society in general does not want to take responsibility for their own human bodies. We leave it up for the doctors and the pharmaceutical industry to do that. We put full trust in our pharmaceutical drugs to heal us. We don't want to take any responsibility for our own. The pharm pharmaceutical drug industry knows this and takes advantage of this. If they really don't want to cure you, that would hurt their bottom line of making profits. They even have the gall to say this. About a year ago, I saw an interview with a large drug company. The CEO said, We are not in the business of curing people. We are in the business of making money for our shareholders. <laughs> that about sums it up. Every drug on the market has serious side effects. Listen to the sweet commercials and they will tell you for each drug what they are. Yes, even drug is included on the list. Humanity is playing Russian roulette when taking these drugs. Remember, they are only masking the symptoms, not curing the problem. Each member of society should take responsibility for their minds and body. Tools must be provided in all stages of life for everybody. We are constantly learning and growing. What was said 10 years ago might be obsolete today. My advice is don't eat junk food. I'm not saying never, but eat good nutritional food 99% of the time. The average American eats about 99% junk food and 1% nutritional food. Don't microwave your food. In some elementary schools, kids will microwave water and try to grow plants with it. They will also use good water and water another set of plants. The microwave plants never survive over time. Once again, common sense is uncommon. Microwaves changes the molecular structure of water and destroys the nutritional value of food. Ever since my teenage years, I said that food is my best medicine. Eating good nutritional food is the best life insurance policy you can ever have. I've been sick only a few times in my life. I'm very conscious of what I eat. I try to eat only organic food and foods that are GMO free. You may think that is fanatical. Yet, going back to the chemistry set, I'm providing the best nutrition and chemicals for my chemistry set. 
Is that being fanatical? Or is the most practical thing you can do? Common sense is uncommon. Our Western diet of junk food is destroying us, yet we think that if a person that eats good, wholesome, organic food is a fanatic. Run amused by that. We have lost precious wisdom when it comes to taking care of our bodies. We have lost the wisdom of being in harmony with the universe and Gaia. We don't ever think that most of our crops are sprayed with harmful chemicals. A person has to wear a face mask and protective clothing to do this, yet we have no problems eating this. To society, it's the way to go, yet cancer eventually might come knocking on your doorstep. My wife sold life insurance during the 70s to farmers. It was an easy sell. Even back then, farmers knew that farming with pesticides was extremely dangerous and life-threatening. It was common for some members of the family to get cancer, yet nothing has changed in 50 years. In society today, we continue with our old ways. We think that our government officials would change the laws, yet so far, that hasn't happened. We go on our destructive ways and never think about the repercussions. Our lives are on remote control and never think we are responsible for our actions. The blind are leading the blind. There is a profit to be made. Whether it's extremely dangerous or harmful to you, the bottom line is profit driven. Recalibration in medicine. Try this natural prescription. Even if you implement just a few, watch your health will slowly turn around. Be kind. Have a heart like a child. Learn to meditate. Take a daily walk in nature. Get fresh air. Exercise and stretch every day. Eat only food that is good for your body. Laugh whenever you can. Laughter is the greatest medicine. Drink plenty of water throughout the day. We tend to be dehydrated. Remember, most of the human body is comprised of water. Wake up with gratitude. That will help you throughout the day. Pray and take positive actions in your life. You are in charge of your chemistry set. Monitor your thought, words, and actions at every moment. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Daily ask yourself that question and put actions to solve that puzzle of life. Learn how to reprogram your mind and body. The hardware, software, and operating systems were put in place when you were born. You can rewire your neural circuits. Remember, over 95% of our actions come from the subconscious mind. Be tolerant towards others. You might be surprised. Love your fellow man. He has a difficult journey just like you do. Friendship and love goes a long way in life. Don't get into flame throwing and reading it on social media. It's a waste of time. You are reprogramming your mind and body to be angry at your fellow man. You are drinking your own poison, by the way. Take time to chill out every day. Listen to music, write some poetry, create art, or just sit in a chair with the doors wide open and listen to the birds singing their sweet songs. You are never alone. Remember that daily. Your ancestors are always with you. Learn how to be in harmony with them. 
Develop your intuition. Listen to your gut feelings. Your body is always telling you what it needs to maintain health. Intuition is the key to be aware of your ancestors. You have five external senses and five internal senses. Learn about your five internal senses. The East has been talking about this for thousands of years. We are behind the time. Be curious. See the miracles in life. Focus on your breath in each moment. The same breath you take is the same breath the universe takes. Have your feet on the ground and your head in heaven. Remember, whatever you pay attention to, it starts paying attention to you. Take that to the highest levels. You are the universe. You just don't know it. The mind is a tuning fork. It vibrates or whatever it touches. Use it wisely. The mind is either your friend or foe or somewhere in between. Learn to train your mind to be your friend. You train your dog. Why not train your mind? Get plenty of sleep and rest. Learn to love your dreams. Your ancestors talk to you through your dreams. Your subconscious mind shows you what you should do. It gives warning signs and signs that if you continue down this dangerous path, the repercussions might manifest. Live your life so when you put your head on the pillow, not a care of this world enters your mind. Sweet dreams. Don't take life so seriously. At work, don't get attached or bothered by the craziness. Learn to live in the center of the hurricane, not in the whirling winds of the mind. You did not come down to this world solely to work. Maintain a work-life balance. Never give up your vacations to your workplace. If you get sick, there's always someone who would take your place. Common sense is uncommon. Need I say more? Take care of your body. It's the only one you get, at least for this go around. Everyone has a different and unique story to tell. Listen to your fellow man. I mean listen. Don't think what I'm going to say next, but listen to his thread of thought. You will get great wisdom that way. Some new wisdom may be shared. It may be as simple as, I don't want to walk down that path. Use less of your carbon footprint. The universe contains the vast treasures inside of you. Everything external will be taken away from you someday including you. The only thing you take is your internal treasures. Establish a relationship with Gaia, Mother Earth. Your mother is always holding you in her arms. You aren't even aware of it. Learn to tune within. Is that text message that important in the enormous scheme of the universe? Recalibration in Economics This is from Bernie Sanders via Twitter. Wealth of Jeff Bezos in 2009 6.8 billion Wealth of Jeff Bezos in 2020 184 billion Wealth of Mark Zuckerberg in 2009 2 billion Wealth of Mark Zuckerberg in 2020, 103 million. U.S. minimum wage from 2009 to 2020, seven dollars and 25 cents. We need an economy that works for all of us, not the world's one percent. World's first trillionaire. We already have trillion dollar companies. 
how soon before we have our first trillionaire? According to Comparison, a company that allows small to medium-sized firms to compare different business products, the world's first trillionaire will likely be Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos. Their projection shows Bezos reaching trillionaire status by 2026. The company said their projection is based on taking the average percentage of yearly growth over the past five years and applying it to future years. Comparison shows <coughs> Basil's net worth grew an av <coughs> average at 34% over the last five years. A stack of $1 billion bills would be 67.9 miles high. A trillion dollar bills would reach 67,866 miles into space. Trade show times. A trillion dollars is laid out end to end would stretch 96,906,656 miles further than the distance of the Earth to the Sun. A trillion dollars laid side to side would cover more square miles than the states of Rhode Island and Delaware combined. A trillion dollar on skids would need to be transported by 478 semi-trailers. Unloaded, it would fill a football field from sideline to sideline and almost goal line to goal line. If you were to spend $40 a second, it would take 289 days to spend a billion dollars, and that's at a spending rate of almost $3.5 million per day. At that same spending rate of $40 a second, it would take 792 years to blow through $1 trillion. I don't know about you, but this is insane. Our modern day political system is solely for the rich. I wrote a book called Conscious Economics last year. It was about how we must have economics based upon the principles of Mother Earth. We are consumers on this planet. We should be protectors on this precious land. The U.S. minimum wage has been the same for 10 years. It is at $7.25. Nobody, I mean nobody, can live on that. One out of every five children doesn't have any food for breakfast. We are the richest nation in the world, yet so many people live in poverty. Here's a headline from the Washington Post. By the way, this is owned by Jeff Bezos. Walmart and McDonald's have the most workers on food stamps than Medicare, a new study shows. Our politicians complain about the citizens living off welfare and food stamps, while our government is footing the bill for thousands of Fortune 500 companies. The biggest by far are the companies who don't pay their workers a living age and have the government pitch in. Meanwhile, they make huge profits. The days of kings and serfs are still alive. They just have different names. I could go on and on and on. Clearly, a reset button must be pushed. I don't see it coming soon. Recalibration in housing. Here we are the richest country in the world, but we have a housing crisis at hand. I saw on the news recently the homeless people in Los Angeles. I could not believe my eyes. There are literally thousands of people living in the streets. It looked like a third world country. Most of these people are hardworking Americans and lost their jobs. They couldn't pay their rent and ran behind on their bills. Over time, they became homeless. 
Most of these people have families. On one hand, we have a person who in five years will become a trillionaire. On the other hand, millions of people are living in the streets. In southern Oregon, a huge fire came last September and over 3,000 homes got destroyed. The price of houses skyrocketed by $100,000 to $150,000 in just six months. And unfortunately, they keep on climbing. We all need a roof over our heads. We all need to make a decent wage. The middle class in America is slowly dwindling away. I was a software engineer for most of my life. During the 80s and 90s, the salaries went up. This was a good time. Since 2009, when the market tanked and housing tanked, the salaries have tanked. When I retired a few years ago, I was making 20000 less than what I made since 2009. In the software industry, salaries have remained stagnant. My best friend was making around $200,000 a year as a consultant. Those golden years are long gone. Two, it seems to me like the entire working force is struggling just to remain alive. Our jobs are not stable. Millions of people are struggling just to pay the mortgage and their bills. On top of that, the pandemic has millions of people out of work. Mind you, they still have to pay their bills. We need to hit the reset button. To be frank, I don't see an answer. Our mindset has to change. Our large companies must make their employees number one instead of shareholders. I have seen thousands of people losing their jobs because the, th the bottom line is profit. They hire and lay off people on a whim. America must reclaim its soul. We have gone from light to darkness and it's getting worse day by day. We have a Congress that doesn't have the wisdom to face the problems today. Truth is fiction and fiction is true. If we have a part of Congress that will spin the truth so much that people believe it, we are doomed as a nation. Many politicians are in for it for power only. They only say they are representing their people. Lately, it seems we are regressing, not progressing. We are returning to darker days. Thousands of laws are being passed based on lies and deception. They know they are lies, but spin the truth to make things more difficult for their opponent. It's all a huge mind game, and the public is being affected. Our democracy is at stake. The American life that we know is at stake. We desperately need leadership at all levels. We must all change for the better. Recalibration in Raising Kids If I could press the reset button for raising kids, this is what I would love to do. Raise kids to be kind in all situations. Even in the midst of adversity, be kind and calm. The world doesn't need bullies. Teach them to truly listen in every moment. One can gather great wisdom that way. Teach them to walk in another person's shoes. Be tolerant. Everyone is walking on their own journey. What works for them might not work for you. Teach them to meditate at a young age. Meditation is the key to finding the jewels within. Teach them to pray daily. Praying is talking to God. Meditation is God talking to you in silent words. The word cannot be spoken. Hint, hint. Teach kids to focus on their breath in each moment. Behind the breath is the same breath that is keeping the universe alive. One who is calm will live in the center of the hurricane. Currently, we leave. We live our lives 
like leaves blowing in the wind. Everyone has the chemistry set built in from the day they were born. From a young age, teach them to program it from the get-go. The hardware, software, and operation.